Shalom, shalom. It's been one of them kind of days. Crazy out. <laughs> wow, man, they wear a hat up here, dude. They were blind people. You guys pray for me. I'm in ministry with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Shalom, shalom, Mishpacha. Stephanie, what's happening, sister? Drug, I'm not even going to try. Mr. D. Jogana. Or Mrs. D. Chucky. Shalom, Chuck. What's up, brother? Good to see you, brother. All right, so. Make sure you Yeah, right. All right, Mishpacha. Wow. Two men in the Torah. Oh, man. We're starting to tackle the book of Romans. Are you guys ready? Yep. We are starting first of Paul's books, Romans. So, two men in the Torah, testing Paul's writings to Torah, episode number five. And we, we as you all know, we've done, we've gone through Acts. We're done with Acts. Now we're going to start attacking, um, start tackling, not attacking, Paul's writings and with his first book, Romans. So we, the plan is, Shalom Danielle Taylor. Depending on how how in depth we end up going, um, we're planning on hitting, you know, uh, Romans chapters one and two. So, uh, so yeah. <clears throat> yep. So well, I'm gonna let Anthony read first. Actually, we're gonna blow the shofars and we're gonna pray. And then I'm going to eat a snack while Anthony reads. Ready? Yep. One, two. Cinnamon oil. Somebody send us a bottle of cinnamon oil. All right. Should we pray? Avinu in heaven, we come to you in prayer in the precious name of Yehovah Yeshua. Abba, we thank you for another day to be alive. We thank you, Father, for another day that you have given us permission to be here in the land. Abba, we thank you for your mercy and your grace and your love and the ability to be able to search out in your scriptures, to hunt the truth, to seek out, to defend your word. You, you said to always be ready to give a defense of the faith. And Father, that's what we're doing with the testing of Paul's writings. There are so many that I, for one, believe that has lost sight or been drawn off the correct path and has gone down the path of rejecting and uh, declaring that Paul's letters uh, are false doctrine and are of the word of you, of your word. But Abba, I'm, I'm inclined to believe that you never lost control of your scriptures. And though man tried to add or whatever, those things got weeded out. And what we have is what you meant for us to have. And Father, what is in here is your truth. And that it all lines up with each other. That the Tanakh and the Brit Hadashah are witnesses to your Torah. And Paul being a half of the Brit Hadashah, that everything that he teaches and taught all lined up with your Torah. And that he was never a person that taught otherwise. But for the sake of argument, Father, we, we seek to prove the truth in your word. At least to those who have ears to hear and those who are teachable, including ourselves. The Father that we will see, that we will know, not just because we declare it, but because of studying it out and presenting it, that all of us will come to see and know the truth of what Paul's writings are about and what it, and does it all pertain to our Mashiach and your Torah. And we pray this and we ask this as we read and we speak on this stuff, Father, 
Let every word that proceeds from our mouths be of you and you alone. Be your truth. Let nothing that is incorrect even leave our lips. And let our words not fall to the ground. We ask this in Yehovah Yeshua. Amen. Amen. All right. So, Romans chapter 1. I'll kick out with the reading here. Um, <clears throat> just a brief history about the book of Romans. Um, the book of Romans is dated back to 57 or 58 CE. So around that time approximately that it has been dated and it's been written from the audience mainly to both Jews and Gentiles because we know that Rome, uh, what's the saying, every road leads to Rome. Um, right. Because there's a lot of mixed cultures within the city of Rome, within that place. And so you would have people from all walks of life. You would have had Jews alike there, Gentiles alike, um, from all different the pagan religions that they followed. And so... Um, that's who it was basically written to, and during the, Paul, the time of Paul, we had Messianic congregations, Messianic synagogues, we had Messianic um, you know, gatherings in the homes that Paul would, would get to go to and share the truth with and encourage and preach with, and so um, basically that's what the book of Romans is, it's a, it's a letter to the city of Rome and all the people there, the, the congregations there. The believers there that you know, for them to be encouraged in the Messiah, to be encouraged in the word, to be encouraged in the faith. Um, it's also the longest of Paul's writings. Um, out of all of his writings in the Brit Hadashah, Romans is the longest. So I just wanted to hit on that really quick before I start reading, just to give you guys that information. Um, so starting in chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Paul, a bondservant of Yeshua HaMashiach, called to be an apostle, separated to the Holy Gospel, which he promised before through his prophets and the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Adon, who was born of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the son of Elohim, with power according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. And, Mishmaka, I find that I find that very powerful. The, the first thing that Paul does when he opens up his letter to the Romans is declare the authority of Yehovah Yeshua. He declares who Yehovah Yeshua is. He proclaims that Yehovah Yeshua is the Messiah throughout all the, the, the Tanakh, all the all the prophets, all the scriptures. He would have he would have been talking about Isaiah fifty three. He would have been the suffering servant. He would have been talking about all the different places in the prophets. That, that speak to uh, Yehovah coming you know, and Mashiach coming, and Paul's confirming that right here, right from the beginning, from the Torah, from the Tanakh, just as what you said, just you said like, it earlier. Yeah. Well, just like Yeshua did, when, when Yeshua went into the room with the disciples, it says that he showed them who he was in the scriptures. Yeah. Well, there's only one set of scriptures in the first century, and that was the Tanakh. Um, you know, better sheet to Malachi. And so what was Yeshua showing them? So that means what was Paul showing them? What was he teaching them from when, as Anthony just said, when he was going from synagogue to synagogue to congregation to congregation, even the house gatherings and stuff like that? What scriptures is he teaching from? Yeah. And this is just one of many places that we're going to come across through his writings where it says that Paul was teaching them Yeshua in the scriptures, yes. through the scriptures, reading from the scriptures, reading the Torah. So, you know, to all of these evidences that point to him teaching Torah. So, And, and I think that's, that's beautiful that, like you said, just as Yeshua was in the room with his disciples, revealing himself to them in the scriptures, Paul's literally doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. He's literally doing the same thing with all these congregations and these yeah. believers. Amen. So... All right, so uh, verse 5, through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to faith among all nations for his name, among whom you are also called of Yeshua HaMashiach. To all who are in Rome, beloved of Elohim, called to be saints, grace to you and peace to you from Elohim our Father and the Adon Yeshua HaMashiach. Tripping, I thought that door was opening. 
All right. <laughs> yeah. Better take a break. I know. All right. So let's see. Verse eight. First, I thank my L through Yeshua Hamashiach for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For Elohim is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making requests if by some means now at last I may find a way in the will of Elohim to come to you. For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts so that you may be established, that is, that I may be encouraged together with you by mutual faith, both of you and me. Amen. That's what we're supposed to do for each other as brethren. Yeah. Um, Read that again. All right. So it says, uh, that yep. is, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Our faith encourages each other. That's right. <clears throat> I can't help but think of, you know, all these videos that we get, we've got to do with, with um, going around the land, going around in the Negev, going to Yerushalayim and things like that, and, and just seeing all your guys' supportive posts and your supportive prayers and all of your guys' support. You know, a lot of you are saying that we encourage you, but Mr. Pacha, you guys are such an encouragement to us. Like, yeah. every single time we see you guys saying something encouraging or supportive, it just touches us. The know? way that you guys are declaring how this stuff is touching you, um, even we just read a sister um, was watching the videos from today when him and I were going through the Negev and looking at these caves and stuff. And she was like, you guys are my eyes and my heart to the land. Amen. Uh, that just hit us, Amen. you know, in the all, and just one of many, many, many uh, ways that you guys are sharing with us of, of of how this is affecting you guys and what it's doing for you. And it's the very thing that we've been hoping for all along in this is that part of the mentality that we believe Yah has put in our hearts about what we're doing here in the land, as, as I say all the time, this world's going to hell in a handbasket and it's, and it's getting there faster and faster. Things are becoming so bad and so evil around us and, and, and so much wickedness is be, being declared good that I'm seeing a lot of be, believers starting to go, I don't know if I can do this anymore. I don't know if I can hang on anymore. And we want this to be what, what we're doing here. A part of what Yah set us here, we believe, is to keep everybody encouraged around the world until you come to the land. And whenever that may be, but we're, we're doing this because we want the word to be alive to you guys more than ever before. We want the world to be, you know, I, I want to throw a little shout out for David and Judea, uh, another brother in ministry. I mean, every year he comes for three, me three months during the spring feast, three months during the fall feast. And this man walks around every day doing live videos of just everyday events going on on any level. Yeah. Ours is more doing more strictly biblical stories and stuff, but everything he's doing is just as well. And he's doing the same as well. But between what he's doing, what we're doing, you know, we don't see other ministries really doing this kind of thing. And you guys, we all need as much encouragement as we can get. We need to know and keep our eyes on the hope. And if we can fill you up with the hope by running around all the time and doing this and, and, and doing these messages and showing you the places all throughout the scripture, man, it gives you it gives you that thing to hang on to. You're hanging on to his word, amen? amen. And um, And it's encouraging, you know? And so, uh, like Brother Anthony said, you guys encourage us so much. It makes us stay on fire and stay focused to keep doing this because of the way you guys respond to it Amen. and how much it means to you guys. And so, Amen. you know, so yeah, we love you guys. Yep. All right, verse 13. Uh, now, I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often plan to come to you but was hindered until now, that I might have some fruit among you also, just as among the other Gentiles, I am a debtor both to Greeks 
and to barbarians, both to wise and to unwise, so as much as in me I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. <clears throat> Verse 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Mashiach, for it is the power of Elohim to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Do you want to say anything on that? Go ahead. Uh, for, it in, for in it the righteousness of Elohim is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen. And where is that written? Uh, so right there, Paul is quoting from Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 4. Hey, why would he quote from the, the Tanakh? Exactly. Why would he quote from the Tanakh if he's teaching a new doctrine? Yeah. Amen. And it says, Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Excuse me. And this isn't a new message. Uh, the Torah teaches us this. The book, the book of Genesis teaches us this. Um, Genesis 15, 5 through 7 says, Then he brought him outside and said, Look now toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed in Yehovah, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Then he said to him, I am Yehovah, who brought you out of, the, uh, who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to inherit it. So, Mishpacha, this is, this is how Yah desires for us to follow him, is believing in him, believing in his word, believing in his promises, believing and showing that through our faith. And, you know, as we've always said, and as the, the, the Bible says, James chapter 1, faith without works is dead. How do we prove our faith? It's with our actions. And Paul's getting ready to say that here in a little bit. Um, but I want to read another piece in Genesis because Abraham was made righteous because he believed. But what, what, does, what, is, what is believing? You know, what, how do you prove to Yah that you believe him? How do you prove to God that you have faith in? By walking out of his Torah. Exactly. Verse, or chapter 26, verses 4 through 5. And I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands, and in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, my laws, my Torah. So... Yeah, I'm just, I want to. I want to just read that right there because that's in Torah. That's what Torah teaches us all throughout the Torah. All the five books of the Torah teach us that. Believe in Yah, walk out His ways, walk out His Torah. Amen. Let's see. Let's see. All right. So verse seventeen. So I'll continue on here. Um, verse eighteen. For the wrath of Elohim is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of Elohim is manifest in them, for Elohim has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood. Go ahead, finish that sentence. Finish that verse, sorry. Being understood by the things that are made. Okay, so but one thing I want to hit on here real quick. For the wrath of Elohim is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth Amen. in unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. That is the very thing that Paul is being accused of doing, is suppressing the truth, removing the truth of the Torah from the word of Elohim. He, why in the world... I mean, why would he even declare something to this nature except that it would bring utter damnation onto him if, if he was teaching the very thing he just wrote against right here? Mm -hmm. Because true unrighteousness is to walk in Yehovah. True righteousness? I'm sorry, yeah, thank you. True righteousness is to walk in Yehovah. True unrighteousness is to teach against the Torah of Yehovah. That is unrighteousness in every way. And that's just, that's re, it, it, it has no merit for Paul to speak and declare the wrath of Elohim like this is revealed from heaven. 
against all of this. Amen. And because what may be known of El is manifested in them, for El has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Wow. And how do we know the attributes of Yehovah? How do we know? In his Torah. In his Torah. There is no better way to know the heart of Yehovah, to know who he is, to, to follow after him, to understand his character, than to know the Torah. Because you don't find it anywhere else. There's nowhere else, not even in the rest of Tanakh. All the rest of Tanakh is prayers to Yah and is the prophets, yeah. judgment, and all these other things. Nothing after uh, Devarim, uh, Deuteronomy, nothing after that. From Joshua on, it's about Israel. It's about uh, keeping the commandments. But no, yes, it's, 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 it's the first witness to the Torah. Nothing after Deuteronomy gives us the, the attributes and the understanding and the heart of Yehovah. It, it, it's judgment. Better than and, the Torah. Huh? Better than the Torah. Then. Right. Right. Do you want to keep reading or you want me to read again? Go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, you finish. Okay, verse 21. Because although they knew Elohim, they did not glorify him as Elohim, nor were they thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible Elohim into an image made like corruptible man. Wow. And birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore Elohim also gave, up, gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of Elohim for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. I have a question, but well, it's more of a rhetorical question. So Mishpaha, if you come across somebody who... Um, if you come across somebody who declares Paul's writings to be false, here's something I would encourage you to ask them, because this is what I'm hopefully going to remember to ask next time I come across somebody like that. Ask them, what, what, what's Paul teaching? What's he teaching? He's teaching, he's teaching, like, with these past verses? No, yeah, but what are they? What are they declaring? They're saying, "Oh, Paul's false." Okay, so what's? Tell me what Paul's teaching if he's not teaching Torah. Tell me what he's teaching. Show me what he's just saying. Oh, he's teaching that we're saved and we don't have to obey the law. That well, I'm sorry, that's one sentence, and he's got thirteen books. You tell me what he's teaching in those thirteen books if he's not teaching Torah. Exactly because. Everything that we've read thus far is Torah. He's teaching Torah. He's talking about um, idols and, and being given over to idols and sexual morality and things like that, which is all from Torah. Yep, all part of the commandments. Yes, he's he's elaborating on what you know what sin is and what gives us sin. What the answer to what sin is? What what is there that tells us what sin is? The Torah. Torah. That's why he says, and I'm not trying to get ahead in this series, but. That's why he says in, in what, Galatians, where it says the Torah brings life to my sin. Yep. Because it, that's what the Torah is there for. It shows us, it reveals to us what our sin is. Okay, so. Good. Where did I finish off? Did I, so for this reason, uh, verse 26, for this reason Elohim gave them up to vow passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. That's from Torah. <laughs> Likewise, also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lusts for one another, men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. Where does that come from? All the Torah. That's, that's from Torah. That's actually, uh, uh, 
What is it, Leviticus 6? Something like that. Leviticus, yeah. Leviticus, so. Okay. 6 or 9. Or... Um, <clears throat> all right. 22. Yeah, Leviticus 22. 22, okay. Uh, verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain Elohim in their knowledge, Elohim gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. Wow. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, uh, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of Elohim. Violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, um, un undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of Elohim that those who practice such things are deserving of death. That's breaking the whole schma. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Wow. Yeah, you know, again, all of these things are, are the only reason why these things are sin is because they're against Torah. They break Torah. Every single one of the things that Paul just listed right here breaks Torah. So if he's not preaching Torah, I don't know what he's preaching. All right, so let's keep going. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O oh man, whoever you are who judge, for in whatever you judge, another you condemn yourself. I'm sorry, for... Whatever you judge another, let me try that one more time. For in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. Now, later on, Paul says that we are to correct and exhort each other daily. I think it's in, well, I don't remember, Galatians or something. We'll get there. But the thing of it is, Mr. Baha'i, is Paul's not saying we can't judge each other. He's saying that. You condemn yourself because you're doing the same thing exactly. that they're doing. He, and Yeshua right. said the same thing. People take the, oh, don't judge me. Yeshua said you can't judge each other. Well, actually, that's not what Yeshua said. Yeshua said we are to judge each other. But he said don't judge one another lest you be judged. And if you continue on, he's, des he's describing <clears throat> that you're going to be judged the way you judge the way you judge others. However you judge somebody, you're going to be judged the same way. So when you judge, you better make sure that you're right. You better make sure that you're not committing the same sin that the person that you're trying to judge or correct him. And it's not a judgment in the sense of, I judge you, you're sentenced to death. Right. But it's a judgment of, hey, brother, what you're doing you're going to lead people astray. You're going to, you're, you're, you're doing something you know better not to be doing. That's, that is holding each other accountable. We're judging the act of what, what we know that somebody else shouldn't be doing. If Anthony is out there messing around in some way, shape or form uh, in anything, whether he's, let's, okay, we're surrounded by Hasidic Jews. If he was to start trying to act like them, dress like them, for the purpose to be one of them, all right, and, and one and started keeping their practice, but then around believers, he was to dress like this and act normal. He would be doing the same thing that Kepha was accused of doing by Paul, um, Peter. He was he was being playing the hypocrite when the Jews were around. He acted like a Jew when the Gentile when the uh, Goyim were around who'd been saved. He would he would act like them, playing the hypocrite and different things like that we can we cannot we have to if we're claiming it we need to be walking it and making sure that what we're doing is lining up with y'all and this is what paul is talking about amen amen and i'll take it a little bit further and say that a lot of the letters that paul wrote were addressed to the churches were addressed to yeah their clergy leadership the the people who would have been doing these things. And he's letting them know, just like Brother Paul said, if you're going to be shepherds of these congregations of the flock, then you're going to be telling people, you know, live this way, live, don't live that way. You better make sure that you're on point with the way you're living. You can't constantly lay out their sin if you're, you yourself are doing the same things. And, and we all know that, unfortunately, there's been a lot of um, – times throughout history where church leaders have been guilty of that stuff. You know, like even today, excuse me, we have church leaders and, 
and the mega church leaders and congregational leaders that they they are preaching a good uh, sermon or a good message and telling people all these things on how to walk with God, yet they're caught in adultery or they're caught in like a homosexual relationship or something or some kind of weird scandal. And so, you know, don't be a hypocrite. That's the biggest takeaway. You know, don't be a hypocrite. Go ahead, brother. Okay. All right, let's see. Verse 2, but we know that the judgment of Elohim is according to the truth against those who practice such things. And do you think this, O man, you who judge that those practicing such things and doing the same, that you will escape the judgment of El? Or do you despise the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of El leads you to repentance? But in accordance with your hardness and your impotent in penitent heart, you are treasuring up for yourselves wrath in the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of Elohim, who will render to each one according to his deeds eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish on every soul of man who does evil of the Jew first and also of the Greek. Now to pause there for a minute. So I mean, That's the second time Paul said that. Buddy. Yes. And, and here's the thing. So Paul's, Paul's telling us, I mean, Paul is speaking against the very stuff he's being accused of. I mean, this man is letting known that whatever we do that is against Elohim, what Elohim is he talking about if he is not following the Torah? If he's not preaching from the Tanakh, then what possible God is he talking about? Because he, he is preaching against himself if he is teaching contrary to Torah like he's being accused of by some. He is, con he is damning himself and condemning himself by his own words. Amen. And then he's making clear the very thing that Yeshua said, I come for the Jew first. Yes. And he, Paul reiterates, the yes. Jew first, Yehuda first, the then Latin. the Goyim, the, the, or the Greek in, this, in the English, but it's the Goyim, the Gentiles. The and what does that come from? Israel first. Yeah. Then those who will come in right there in the Torah, I'm Yah so said, yes, Rah, Yah said, if those who wish to come and be in the land of Israel and will keep the Torah, keep my commandments, keep my statutes, keep my Moedim, my mitzvot, everything, then they shall be treated as a born citizen of Israel. That's exactly what Yehovah taught us through Moshe, and it's exactly what Paul is reiterating right here in his word. Yeah, uh, before you move on really quick, we'll render to each one according to his deeds. That's a quote direct from Psalm 62, 12. Also you, O Yehovah, belongs to you, O Yehovah, belongs mercy, for you render to each one according to his word. So Paul's quoting a lot of Tanakh here. Again, like we said in the beginning of this video, um, Paul's, Paul's clearly teaching from the scriptures. Uh, left and right. Yeah, so, yeah. All right. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. Verse 10. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone. Sorry, I'm kind of out of the picture here. I'm leaning over too much to the side. Um, where was I at? Verse 10. There we oh, go. Lord, but glory, did you, did honor. You, did you read? Uh, yeah, I read 9. Okay. But glory, honor, and peace to everyone who works what is good, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. There's the third time he said that in two chapters. For that there is no partiality with L. For as many as have sinned without Torah. Pay attention here, Mr. God. All right, I've got the. Hang on a second. I've got. Let's see. There it is, Torah, right there in Hebrew. Beautiful. I have the Hebrew Brit Hadashah. And right there, for as many have sinned without Torah will also perish without Torah. 
And as many as have sinned in the Torah will be judged by the Torah. Mishpacha, if you sin without the Torah, Yah still judges you and you still will be punished no matter what. But to those who sin, who know the Torah, they will be judged by the Torah and Yehovah, will, you, the judgment is still the same. It, nothing changes. The point is, is, is without Yehovah, the, the sentence is death. Yeah. And death is to be cast into the everlasting lake <clears throat> of fire. Amen. Verse 13, for not the hearers of the Torah are just in the sight of Elohim, but the doers of the Torah will be justified. Boom. Wait, stop the presses. Stop the presses, brother. Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> Wait a minute. Right there. Wait a minute. Did he just say that we're justified by the Torah? If we Do are, it. yes, yes, yes. Say that again. Not the ears of the Torah, but the doers. Oh, of the Torah, just like but, Yeshua but, said, just but, like James but, said. But just like all the Torah says. <laughs> but wait a minute! I thought Paul teaches that we don't have to keep the Torah. Isn't that what everybody's saying? Isn't that what's being declared? It's not what he's saying here. <clears throat> yeah, at verse thirteen. I'm going to read that again. For not the hearers of the Torah are just in the sight of a... Oh, so it's kind of like these pastors who are saying we don't have to keep the Big Ten anymore. Yep. So they're a hearer of the word, but they're not a doer of the word. Mm -hmm. And they won't be found just. Mm -hmm. And they won't be justified. Mm -hmm. But... The doers of the Torah will be justified. For when Gentiles who do not have the Torah by nature do the things in the Torah, these, although not having the Torah, are a Torah to themselves. Because it wasn't given to them. That's right. It was given to Israel first. It's, that's why Paul is saying to the Jew first, then to the Greek. <clears throat> All right, let's keep going. Verse 15. And, and also really quick, too, he's speaking towards, oh my gosh, he's speaking the towards these, these new Gentiles coming into the faith and having the desire of you to follow Yeshua, to believe in Yeshua. And a lot of them even having the desire right out the gate to keep commands, to keep Torah. And a lot of the, the Pharisaical uh, Jews and, and, and the leaders in the, in the, in the sects were like, no. No, you guys can't. You guys can't do this. This is for us. This is, they were they were judging them. They were being harsh on them. They were they still they were actually them. breaking Torah by telling people exactly. they can't do the Torah. They, they still weren't accepting them, and that is why Peter fell victim to playing the hypocrite. Why? Because Jews didn't want to sit and eat with Gentiles, even though they weren't Gentiles anymore because they were believers. And Peter, instead of going and sit with his brethren who were messianic and they believe, I don't say messianic because they believe in Yeshua, but they believe. Instead, he, what did he do? The classic lunchroom uh, skit in the video, like you're walking towards the table and then you be able to, uh, take a hard left the other way. Oh, no, I can't sit with them. You know, that's exactly what Peter did. Yeah. Because he wanted to sit with the, the Jewish, the Jewish brethren. And, and he was, and Paul was like, whoa, man, you can't do that. You're an example. You're an example to these people. They listen to you. They follow after the words that you say. Right. You know, and, and so, that's what Paul's speaking to here as well. As these babies in the word, basically, coming in with pure faith, are basically more righteous than the leaders who are hypocrites. More righteous than the leaders who, they have the Torah, but they're breaking it. Because why? They're not ex accepting the brethren, and they're doing all these things that are breaking Torah behind closed doors. And this is why Yeshua said, Obey, or no, I'm sorry, those who sit in the seat of Moshe yes. do as they exactly. say, but don't do as they do because exactly. they're telling you to keep the Torah, right. but they weren't keeping it correctly themselves because they were adding the Talmud, Mishnah, and all this other stuff. Amen. I love this next verse, 15. All right, so although not, I'm, I'm going to finish the last part of 14. Although not having the Torah are a Torah to themselves, 
who showed the work of the Torah written in their hearts. Amen. I'm sorry, Ms. Baha, but you are not showing the Torah written in your hearts. If you're walking around, I'm saved by grace through faith, and I don't have to do anything but sit around and just declare what I want to declare. I can do whatever I please. I can sin and go repent and go sin again and repent because I'm saved by grace and all I got to do is confess and, and I'm on this free willy ride and I got a free get out of jail card and all the other cliches I can come up with because that's exactly the way it's taught. But that is not what the word says and that's not what Paul's teaching here. It's like we were talking about on the last Torah talk time. You begin to have the Torah written on your heart and you develop that personal relationship with you right. know Bob. You right. develop that intimate personal relationship with him. Man, you're gonna desire to do whatever his word his words has to do. You're gonna you're gonna desire to please him regardless right. of what, what that means doing. If it's in the scriptures, if it's in his word, if it's a part of his instructions, I will please lead me, I want to do it. You know that's, right. that's what Paul's speaking to here. That's right. All right. Okay, so again, verse 15, who show the work of the Torah written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and between themselves their thoughts accusing or else excusing them. In the day when Elohim will judge the secrets of man by Yeshua according to my gospel. Indeed, you are called a Jew and rest on the Torah and make your boast in El and know his will and approve the things that are excellent being instructed out of the Torah and are confident that you yourself are a guide to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness. Hold on. And, he just called the Torah excellent. I just want to make yep. that clear. Go ahead. Yep. An instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, having the form of knowledge and truth <clears throat> in the Torah. All he's talking about is the Torah this whole time. Yeah. You, therefore, who teach another, do you not teach yourself? In other words, are you practicing what you Amen. preach? Amen. You who preach that a man should not steal, do you steal? You who say, do not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who make wow. your boast in the Torah, do you dishonor El through breaking the Torah? Wow. For the name of El is blaspheme among the Gentiles because of you, as it is written. Wow. For circumcision is indeed profitable if you keep the Torah. But if you are a breaker of the Torah, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. Exactly. In other words, it became meaningless because you're disobedient because you, by this, you have uncircumcised the circumcision of your heart. Yep. Therefore, if an uncircumcised man keeps the righteous requirements of the Torah, Will not his uncircumcision be counted as circumcision? What does that mean? The Torah is written on his heart, That's right. which leads to the rest. <clears throat> and will not the physically uncircumcised, if he fulfills the Torah, judge you who even with your written code of circumcision are a transgressor of the Torah? Hold on. Right there is Isaiah 56. The eunuch and all of those who say that we are not worthy, but yet Yah says, if you keep my Shabbat, you keep my commandments, you will have a name in my house and on my wall of prayer. Amen. For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly. That's right. For he is not a Jew who is one outwardly nor is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew who is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit, not in the letter whose praise is not from men, but from El. Now, I want to touch on that real quick because people sorely uh, um, twist that around. <clears throat> Because Mishpaha, if I could go around, I can be one of those who I'm circumcised a day, I'm full stock, Judah, whatever tribe or anything like Paul talks about in one of his letters or in Acts. Um, I'm full blown, born and raised, da -da 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 -da, all the way across the board. Okay, the epitome of what is supposed to be Yisrael initially 
But if that man does not have a circumcised heart in the of the heart of Yehovah, of the of the word of Yehovah in his Torah, then all of his physical attributes, all of his bloodline, all of his circumcision of the flesh, all of his everything else, looking like a Jew, dressing <clears throat> like a Jew, the whole garb um, means nothing. Because I can go and get circumcised, that does not make me a person who has the heart of Yehovah. Circumcision of the flesh for a man is a commandment, and it's supposed to be. And Paul doesn't speak against that, nor is he here. But what Paul is saying is that circumcision of the flesh doesn't mean anything if your heart is not circumcised in the process. And the Torah teaches that too. It is in the Torah that Yah says, your heart must be circumcised unto me. And his commandments written on the tablet of our heart. That is Torah. And that's exactly what Paul is talking about. Amen. Remember how uh, I said in the beginning of the video, Mishpachat, that this this book, the book of Romans, and a lot of Paul's books were written to um, Jews and Gentiles. And a lot of the Jews that it was written to would have been... um, Jews that were like him. You know, Paul was a Pharisee of Pharisees, so he understood and he would have seen how his uh, Pharisaical brethren, how they thought, how they acted, how they perceived um, the going. And Paul's, Paul's given it to him straight, just like Yeshua did. Paul's, Paul has a, I, I will say this all throughout this series probably, Paul has a very, very similar message to Yeshua. Why? Because I personally believe out of all the disciples and, and well, the apostles um, that he had the greatest understanding of Torah right next, you know, under Yeshua. Obviously, Yeshua was a living and walking and breathing Torah in the flesh, so nobody knows the Torah better than him. Right. You know, but underneath him, I believe Paul was pretty, not, you know, he was, he was getting there. You know, he was close. Why? Because he was a student under Gamaliel. He studied the Torah all of his life. He was a Pharisee of Pharisees. We know this. So Paul, I, I believe he had an understanding of Torah that was supernatural. That's why he well, wasn't the way he was. And plus, not to mention the time that Yah took him out into the desert exactly. to teach him. Yeah, we, 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 we don't know what, what he did in that time, in that three years. He could have been having you know, face-to-face interactions with Messiah, having to have a That would have been really you know, awesome. But I'm, I'm saying all this is because scriptures like this, they're geared towards what we're talking about here, what Paul's talking about here. The hypocrites, the, the Pharisees, the ones who believe that their whole outfits and their attire, they desire the best seats in the synagogue. You know, they, they have all the rituals and the traditions of the hand washing, and they look down on everybody else. You know, like um, uh, in the scriptures that uh, uh, Sister Alicia read um, for her message a couple of days ago, the one where it talks about um, the... Uh, the, the man, the two men going into the temple, and one was a tax collector, and one I think was a, a oh a, yeah, a lawyer or something like that. Um, I could be wrong; I'm just paraphrasing from my memory. But basically, the one who was praying, what he was praying was, "I thank you, my God, that I'm not like this man over here." Basically, he's all haughty. Yeah, and, and exactly. The and other guy's just on his knees. He was so humble that he was afraid to look up to the sky, because he knew he was broken before Yah, because of his heart, his 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 brokenness, that that that, that contriteness, that you know, contriteness, contrite spirit that that, that Yah desires for us to have. And and Paul's saying, look, you can do all these fancy things. You can keep the letter to the T. You can you can have the fanciest outfit and the best seats. And then be, like he said, I'm repeating what he said. None of that means diddly squat. If you don't have Mashiach in your heart, if you don't have love in your heart, if you don't have, if you're not walking it out, out of love and desire to please your king. That's right. you know? And that's what, that's what Paul's getting at. These that's people right. were misleading they were misleading the Gentiles, the new believers, the Gentiles that were coming into being believers, because right away they started teaching them, well, you gotta be circumcised, and you gotta do it this way, and you gotta you gotta do it that way, and, and you're you're still second part to us. And Paul's like, No, no, absolutely not. You know what I mean? We're all brethren. We're all brethren. Yes, yes, the the the, the gospel of the Mashiach came to the Jew first and then to the Gentile, but what does he also say? 
you're neither male nor female. You're neither Jew nor Gentile anymore. We are all right. one in Mashiach. And so he's he's really hitting his home here, Mishpah. Amen. So, so, all right, so Romans 1 and 2 next week, and I'm so excited that we're doing this every week now, man. We're, we're going to start hammering it out. So next week, we are going to tackle Romans 3 and 4, um, you know, and if, if it ever goes quick enough, we don't want to hit with too much information, do, hit, tackle too much in one There's a lot. message here because there's so much, and... Anthony and I aren't in any rush to get through this. We want to we want to take this piece by piece and, and really break it down and show. And so far, man, I'll tell you what. We uh, Paul's taken off running, man, with promoting the Torah in his first two chapters of his first book, Romans, and he's taken off running. And he is Torah, Torah, Torah all across the board and everything of what he's saying here. So praise Yehovah. And so uh, with that, Anthony and I are going to sing the run of blessing and bid you Idi. <coughs> Idi. Never mind. Ready? All right. I was going to say, try to say something funny, but uh, <laughs> I'm too tired to be funny. Oh, brother, blow your mouth one more time. Do that. Yeah, let's do that. All right. We love you all, Mishpah, so much. But Yehovah loves you so much more. One, two. Hashem Yeshua HaMashiach, Hasa Shalom, in the name of Yeshua the Messiah, the Prince of Peace. Amen, amen. Shalom, shalom, everyone.